Hello everyone, welcome to Standard Institute YouTube channel. Today I'll explain you a very important engineering concept that's about mat and raft foundations. Before going to explain you about mat and raft foundation, let me give you some basic overview of how the project starts. How the execution start on site, on what basis, on what plans we start our execution on site. See, whenever you are going to execute a new project on a, on a given site, very important thing are uh, its architectural drawings and structural drawings. We have to read these drawings in conjunction with each other. In conjunction means you have to read all both architectural and structural together. Why? You will get a clear concept if you are reading both together and it's easy for you to execute on site. Let's come to the technical points. See, any construction site has two things, a very clear, a very at the very starting point. One is a plan, you what you find in a plan. One is setback area and the other one is built up area understand setback area built up area built up area is nothing but the area on which we will be starting our construction setback area the area which belongs to that particular site but we are not constructing anything on that area is called as setback area. You can take that area for what can I say for ventilation purpose, for any other purpose, whatever. So on to our built up area. The very first thing is we have to see the architectural drawing. Next is column placement drawings. The very important is first is architectural drawing I told you. Second is column placement drawings. The very third one is axis line drawing or grid line drawing or grid drawings axis lines and grid drawing why with those drawings only we can provide column marking on our side such as to excavate the pit if you want to start your construction to give a marking layout marking of your particular side and even of your columns and footings you need to be perfect in reading out and understanding a detailed thorough understanding of grid line axis line drawings then only you can start executing your project on site okay when we are starting axis line drawing or uh, grid line drawing, the plan what I am talking about, the very next thing comes in our mind by checking out our plan that what kind of foundation this project is going with, on what foundation this project has to be constructed. There are many types of foundations in our civil engineering as per the given soil bearing capacity of that particular area. It all depends upon the SBC, soil bearing capacity. In number of footings are there, plain footing, combined footing, uh, raft footing, shoe footing, neighbor footing, mat foundations, all these things are there. Understand? I am not going through all those things as of now. I am concerned about raft or mat foundation. Today, I am concerned about raft or mat foundation. In this particular, that's what I am talking about, mat raft foundation. In this particular foundation, what we do, we will excavate the total land. Total built up area, we will excavate all together. Depends upon uh, how many basements it's having, up to what level beneath I have to go to excavation that that is as per your project so as per the layout plan i'll start excavating the project how shall i start i concentrate only on my built up area as per the plan or to my built up area the very first thing what i'll be doing is 
digging wooden nail across the area why to dig everywhere if it's a box whatever the geometric shape of your site what i'll be doing i'll be just digging it total side with wooden nails digging totally beneath why such that the outer soil sorry outer soil of your particular plot of your particular area must not fall onto it when i start excavating the inner that means whenever i am starting to excavate the built up area from my setback area all must soil sorry soil must not come into my pit for that reason i will start the very first process that is to dig my wooden nails the very next step what i will be going through is excavating mark area what i will be doing i will excavate the mark area as per the depth of the uh, project given in plans as i start excavating it because i'll be excavating the total land of my particular project i will not excavate a pit one pit over here one pit over there one pit over there as we usually do for plain footing combined footings we are not doing like that we are just taking out each and everything whatever uh, the area it's been given to our what build up area i'll be excavating the total build up area when you are excavating the area what will happen ultimately water comes out as the water table is there uh, water will come out what we have to do we have to dewater that area while using pumps we will dewater the uh, particular excavated area and uh, after dewatering we will be going with the process of showering showering is nothing but giving shuttering to your external wall totally external four uh, four sides of your particular plot just provide shuttering so that soil may not uh, again fall back on your excavated pit that's called as showering dewatering and showering is a very important step in our mat or raft foundations after dewatering showering we will showering we will be providing dry quick setting cement when to provide dry quick setting cement because the particular land is possible with water if you are not providing dry quick setting cement again there is a possibility that water may again come up from your land so to avoid or to restrict that water we are giving dry quick setting cement right after that or you can even say that we are providing plain cement concrete bed right after that. we are providing plain cement concrete bed it's not an rcc for rcc you require rebar and concrete understand we are here pcc is being given where the pcc is being provided not in a pit your total project is a pit don't uh, get confused i have ex we have to execute our total area of the where the project has to be built that means we have to excavate all the built up area we have to dewater it we have to provide showing to it and we have to give to the total area we have to give with we have to provide it with dry quick setting cement right after this on to now we got a smooth surface area as we have provided what can i say dry uh, dry quick setting cement and plain pcc bed has been provided all together on our project on our project site the very next thing which we will be doing is the very next thing which we will be doing is providing covering blocks on pcc bed providing see i'll uh, do just one more thing go through my all the pictures which i am providing you over here consecutively with my lecture from over here to there it will be easy for you to understand okay so what we'll be doing we'll be giving providing dry quick setting cement the next step provide covering blocks on pcc bed you can see over here i have shown you what covering block is fine okay then provide why to provide covering block next question see if we are not providing covering block without providing a covering block we are directly giving a mesh then our mesh will not get sandwiched between the concrete our mesh should be in between like a sandwich like a burger in a given burger chicken burger will find a chicken in between filled with from both top and bottom it will be totally covered with what bread so here you are uh, chicken is nothing but you are what can i say riba 
your rebar must be totally packed up by bread. Your bread is nothing but your concrete. Concrete totally packed. When it will get packed? When you are providing a covering block. Onto the covering block. Onto the covering block. When you are placing a mesh, what will happen? When you are covering concrete, concrete will go beneath it to the distance of the covering block and over here also. So what will happen? Our total mesh, bottom mesh will be covered. Okay, all are understanding what I am talking about. Okay. So what we did, we placed the plain cement concrete bed. After that, we are we will be placing a covering block. Onto the covering block, the very next step is provide the bottom mesh. What is mesh? It is nothing but the bar steels. Understanding? Mesh, bottom mesh will be placing all together. Bottom mesh covering block. Bottom bottom mesh as per project plan structure design. Okay. What we are doing? We are providing a bottom mesh onto a covering block. The very next thing which we will be doing over here is tying our floor column to our bottom mesh. Okay, column legs will be tied to the bottom mesh. And the very next thing, right after placing of our bottom mesh, we will be giving chairs over here. Why do you provide chairs over here? This chairs acts as support to our top mesh. Okay, chairs can be single chair, double chair, and the next thing is the spacing which has to be there from one chair to other chair is approximately of one meter or as specified by your design drawing. Okay, what we have, what is happening? We have ordered a bottom mesh. After providing a bottom mesh, we have tied our columns which has to be raised. Then we are we are even providing what chairs? Why to provide chairs? Because we have to give top mesh as we gave a bottom mesh. On to that we have to provide a top mesh between the gap to act as a support. We have to provide chairs and the spacing between chairs has to be one meter after each and every chair or as per the specified spacing provided in the plan. Okay. Then what we have to do now provide top mesh as I told you bottom mesh came into existence. We have uh, tied our flow columns, we have tied our uh, chairs to the bottom mesh and onto the chairs we have placed our top mesh. After placing our top mesh, what will happen? The process will keep on going. Okay. This is how mat foundation works. For you all, so that you can have a certain more hold over the subject what I am teaching you as of now I will again repeat it please concentrate and keep going through the diagrams which I have which I am specifying over here it will be very easy for you to understand how to have a realistic view ok the very let's again get a quick overview of this particular thing what we did why we require mat foundation because the particular project soil has high water table and the soil is weak it can't withstand the load of the huge building which is to be constructed that's the reason why we are going with raft footing and basically we provide raft footing near seashores near, near uh, any, any hotels which has to be constructed near river or a place which is having high water table or a very weak soil bearing capacity Okay, so what we will be doing, we will be digging out the total complete built up area. After digging out the built up area, the very next thing that means we have excavated, right? Digging out nothing but excavating the built up area. As we excavate, what will happen? Water comes out. So we have to dewater that particular space. After dewatering that space, what we have to do? We have to provide shoring all together on every single wall. That means every single particular uh, covering of our pit. Okay, then why do such that the sand must not fall back into our excavated pit? The very next thing which we will be doing is on the rough surface which has got excavated, we have to smooth it, and the very next thing we have to provide dry, quick setting cement such that water must not again come back onto our excavated pit. Right after that, we have to provide our plain cement concrete. But one more, one more, one more important thing I'll be saying over say to you over here is we will be placing four inch polythene sheet all over our project before laying off our PCC bed. Keep it in mind. 
Okay, before PCC pad, what we will be doing? We will provide a 4 inch PCC pad on 4 inch PVC sheet. On to that particular PVC sheet, we will be placing our PCC bed. After placing PCC bed, what will happen? We will be giving our bottom mesh and to that bottom mesh, we will tie our neck column or sorry, our floor column, neck column, the same, whatever, the column below ground level is neck column, above ground level is floor column. We are tying that particular column at the, uh, uh, what can I say? We are tying our column onto our bottom mesh. And we are providing chair. Why we provide chair? We have to again place our top mesh. That's the thing. Provide chair. Now provide top mesh. With this, we are done with our particular mat foundation. Thanks for watching this video on mat foundation. Hope you all understood it. Hope you all got it. And in future, I'll upload you everything. With respect to plan, I'll explain you the total plan reading, the total structural designing work with the help of a project such that you can get clear view, clear concept, technical grip on this particular topic, matter and rap foundation. Thanks for listening to me. Please like, subscribe and share our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. I'll sign off.